Hallelujah. Firstly, congratulations. Firstly, congratulations. Firstly, congratulations. Because the Lord has heard your prayer. Somebody say amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to spend the next three minutes to express our expectation to God in prayer. This is what the Bible says. The expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. He said, ask and ye shall receive. He says, seek and ye shall find. He said, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. He said, upon the mount of Zion, God's people shall not beg. They will rather possess their possession. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. This is the way we are going to start praying. We will start by praying in tongues first. We will pray in tongues first for about two minutes. Then use the remaining three minutes to express our expectation towards God. Joshua, can you lead us in some prophetic chant as we get ready to pray in the Holy Ghost? Please lift up your two hands towards heaven. Oh, then I can see it. Aha! I can't be my own, get my own, get my own, no see. Ah! Get my own, get my own, get my own, get my own, no. My God. Seven and nine, get my own, no me. My God. Eke my own, get 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 my own. Eke my own, get my own, get my own, get my own. Seven and nine, get my own, get my own, get my own, get my own, get my own. Ebena na kiba kudele me mandusi si ah ekipa ba mangu ebena na nunge mame bi ebena ni ebena ni ebena ni gama me nuki mama me osi bande kepe bento ebe kaba bando abe ebena ndo ebena na mangu bebe me ekipa ku ebena na kima mano topele. My God, it's a good voice and pray the Holy Ghost. Thank you, 
The power of God is in this place. The presence of God is in this place. The presence of God is in this place. It's in this place. It's in this auditorium. It's in the overflow auditoriums. It's in every viewing center. The presence of God is in this place. Help our usher. Help our usher. Help our usher. Many of you feel like electric currents on your body. It is the presence of the Holy Ghost. If you are waiting for a healing, you don't need to be prayed for. In this kind of atmosphere, just take it. Just receive it. They talk about such an impartation of the spirits. Pare suneata, pare suneata, pare suneata, pare suneata. They turn us in battle. Eh, she gave Talaman Toreba, Shate, put a ponte haya, Pacushaka Patone Balusia. Let's cease in Pelagos. Hallelujah. Wow. The presence of the Lord is here. And he has just let me tell you what is going to happen. Many of you, the contract you've been praying for, you will just you will just get back, and all of a sudden the approval will be waiting in your inbox. The seasons of dryness are over. The seasons of dryness are over. You are stepping into the season of the overflow. Bentola manakosi ala matale gatash. Pasho seletene kepala nataya. Will you just allow me to just move in the spirit as I feel led to? Okay, okay. The sister with the gold head, get black, wearing black, come. Yeah, come, yes, wearing black in this role. She doesn't I'm talking to her. She's pointing someone else. Yeah, you're the one I'm talking to. Yeah. That brother with the bald head and this mustache. Son is in front of you right now. There's a brother, right? You're wearing blue. I, I, from what I can see, it seems as if you're wearing blue. Pastor George, just let me go this way. I will tell you. Move, 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 move. Move, 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 move. Then turn on your left. Move, keep moving, keep moving. That owl, turn on the left. Keep moving. I know that some people are under the park. Keep turn on your left now. Turn your left now. Keep turning, keep turning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That stop. That brother you're in front of. Bring him. Come. Let us see Zebede. On Tane Kashavalani. Silegato Shadalati. Sunday Kapatana Tona Mashandaya Oradana. The Spirit of God says to you that that which you prayed for, and it seems as if you delayed for a long time, there's a release today. Take it! Mashabalabaya. Mantoka Paratene Susipete. Sir, I see that there has been loss. I see that there has been loss. But this year, there will be recovery I see that you have experienced a huge loss that sets you back do you know what I'm talking about yes sir this year there will be recovery it's not by power it's not by might it's by the Spirit of God will you please come yeah come Oh, yeah, na yanash. 
Silegana Borotos, Vito Sata Lade, Antona Kayana Yadash. I'm going to start praying for people that have secondary infertility because that's what I saw in my spirit. You've had one child, but to have the other child has become very difficult. I particularly see someone that is 12 years and they have not been able to have the other child. As I'm praying, the power of God will be moving. The Spirit of God says, For I see the pain that has come in previous years, and it has even held you back. He said, But right now, it's your time for laughter. The Spirit of God says, Release the pain, for your laughter has come. There will be reasons to rejoice and not to cry any longer. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Everyone that is dealing with a secondary fertility issue, put your hands on your stomach. The anointing destroys the yoke. The anointing destroys the yoke. The anointing destroys the yoke. I'm declaring everything responsible for you not being able to have a child. Right now, by the anointing, I cancel it. Listen and listen well. Next year, wine press, you are coming with your baby. Next year, wine press, you are coming with your baby. In the name of Jesus. Sunday Lemana. Aha. Borana Kosheva Latona Mahaya. Legenesu Celebe. Where's Uche? Lead us. Just one or two songs. Of God is in this place. I need a turn from the mast. I need a turn from you, Lord. Touch me one more time. Oh, Lord. Touch me one more time. Me one more time. I love her. Oh, Lord. I need the turn from the master. I need the turn from the master. I need the turn from the master. I the turn from the master. Everyone that has back problem, arthritis problem, I'm praying for you right now. You're going to do what you could not do before because the healing power of God be made whole in Jesus' name. Begin to do what you could not do before. I see Jesus. Oh, Shada Natola Haya. She turned on the throne. Lift up your hands, people. His presence is here. I see his angels. Hey! Ascending in the skies. Oh, Rana Tosa Haya. I see the spirit. Spirit of God. Who will be the dead? 
Ramana Katalash. Hallelujah. Oh Ramata Kasra. I see Jesus. The power of the Holy Ghost. He's there in this place. I see Jesus. Everyone that has a back problem, I try to begin to exercise your feet. Begin to bend your back. I see. Begin to bend your back. The power of God has healed you. The power of all of you online. The power of God has healed you. Sure you hold him well. My beloved, the most beautiful 
Amen. I sense in my spirit that a lot of you want me to touch you one by one. But in this auditorium, maybe we have up to 7,000 people right now in the three auditoriums. It will be practically impossible to do that. But let us But I'm trusting God that I can release the power of God into the atmosphere. And either you're watching it or in another site or in another location or you're watching online or you are outside the range of this all, you are in the other halls and extension that that power of God will touch you. My, my brother in suit, blue suit, come. Yeah, come. Is, are you together? Come with him. When did you get? Are you married? Yeah. And you're believing for a baby? Or what are you believing for? What? Healing. Healing. What? Do you have a child? You don't have a child. You don't have a child. My sister, come. Start dancing. Carry your baby, start dancing. Start dancing. Start dancing. Start dancing. them forward I, I i i just knew by the spirit i said what are you looking so they said she has a case i said well you don't have a child so that does not matter because the child so you know it's going to come either the five brother or doesn't matter my god let my talk about Power of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, tell that get us a vela hatish. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Wow. I want to read something to you. You know, yesterday as we were ministering here, when I got back home, then all the campuses that we're watching, some of the campus pastors, some of the church pastors were sending me testimonies. So, this came in from Bagada. In Bagada Center tonight, someone that was deaf in the ear was healed. Someone that was at pulse from the ears, it stopped. It said a lump disappeared. Another lump reduced to 10% of the original size. Your sister-in-law, what happened to her? Come, come, come. Because I saw, I saw the message you put on the chat. Your sister-in-law. Then Pastor Mayawa sent this from Ikeja. He said, a woman healed of 16 years disc shift problem that had impacted her spine. She also had an accident that aggravated the issue. She could not walk since Thursday. She was carried here by her family. She got up and began to walk, run, and jump. She was carried into the meeting. 
but the power of God came upon her she began to run jump oh my goodness what happened yes pastor when I got home um, last night so my wife went to the Anthony church so she went with her brother's um, partner so when I got home she just said guess what you know that the lump in her breast disappeared that when we were praying right here that she was thinking about getting a surgery and all that but you know when we were praying the power of God just healed her and then she went home everything gone praise God and even online online several people sharing testimonies of the power of God the question you want to ask is this you know when I was preparing for the meeting today I took time to pray some more again and God told me you must remember I love them so don't pray as if I don't love them he said remember I love them and this is what I want to do everyone here you didn't come here because someone invited you the Holy Spirit brought you here you must remember that he loves you it's something you must tell yourself that he loves me hallelujah there's someone right in front of me you have a heart issue right in front here you have a heart issue where are you where are you come where are you you have a heart problem come right in front of me all the book will be in other locations but the person I'm talking about is just in front of me in this first session okay yes yes that's one then I see somebody yeah, yeah. just in front of me here I know there could be other people that could tap into it thank you Jesus father we give you praise What, what's wrong with your heart? You're young. What is it? I can't hear that. Vati liver. What does that mean? Hepatitis. Wow. What's wrong with your heart? You have what? A low heartbeat. And what, what else? Yes. When, I, when you mention that. What is wrong in the heart? She has a hole in the heart. She has a hole in the heart. See, when they say has a hole, what is it? Jesus. Just say thank you, Jesus. She's here. Because her miracle has come. That devil of infirmity will have to leave now. That is the power of God. That is the power of God. 
are as a power of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, you can have your seats. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Wow. What a good way to start the meeting. <laughs> to start today's session. Normally we will have thought and uh, minister the power of God afterwards. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Will you please turn your Bibles to Amos chapter 3, verse 7. And I will teach briefly and we'll go into a great season of worship. We have um, our dear prophetic minister, Dusin, is here. They say, we love you. you. You know that both personally and publicly. You know, you may not see him often. You may not see him often in the ministry, you know, but almost every other month we'll have great conversations just talking forward and backwards. Once again, I want to thank um, my dear friend Kali for sharing so powerfully, you know, earlier on today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We have several ministers of the gospel here, and I'm hoping that um, Pastor Fojo can give us the opportunity to recognize them just after the message. All of you that are watching online, this would be a great opportunity to share the link. As we normally say in the morning, and all of you physically also, you can take the link and put on your status and share with your friends. Yeah, so that, just imagine and say, you've missed a lot already. Praise God. So take your time, all of you online, share the link with your friends, get them to participate. And if you're in a physical center, you can bring out your phone and also share the link on YouTube, Facebook, and get to participate. It was amazing just seeing the miracles happening here yesterday. To, glory to God. I didn't even ask, how many of you had back and arthritis issues and as you prayed you felt the relief will you wave your hands let me see wave your hands let me see i just want to see look at all the people yeah we will have time to listen to your testimonies we'll have time to listen to your testimonies one of the things you know one of the things i want to teach about especially tonight is how to receive clarity and direction for your next phase how to receive clarity and direction for your next phase. Pastor Femi from Okea, you're welcome. It's nice to see you. I'm just trying to pick Pastor Debola from Love Network. Uh, Pastor Daniel from Hillsong, Australia. From Hillsong, Lagos, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just, I'm trying to pick, I'm trying to pick faces. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Amos chapter 3, verse 5. I was hoping to do a lot of this teaching yesterday, but um, I didn't get there. So the Bible says this, and this teaches the pattern of God. It says, surely the Lord would do nothing, but he will first reveal it to his servant, the, the, the prophet. So when God wants to do something, he reveals it. So the urge you feel that 
it's God revealing it. But the question is this, why does God reveal it? Because when God wants to do it here, he's hoping that he can partner with you to push it into earth through prayers. That's why he reveals it. He's hoping he can partner with you to push it to the earth through prayers. And why am I saying so? Many times you meet people that will tell you that, what's your plan for the future? He says, I don't know what to do. I, I don't have clarity. People like, so what's happening? I don't know if I should move there or stay here. I don't know if I should start a business or stay in my career. And a lot of people find themselves deeply frustrated because they don't have clarity. And sometimes when people want clarity, it's so bad that some people go online and they consult some kind of medium in looking for clarity. What is clarity? The quality and state of being clear. There are certain things you must be clear about. You must be clear about, number one, who I am. Who are you? What is your purpose? You must be clear about what you're meant to be doing now. And you must be clear about how you should be doing what you're doing. And lastly, about when you should be doing it. Why is this important? Even when you know what to do, remember that the timing is important because you can jump ahead of destiny. The Bible says, in this time, it makes all things beautiful. That means some ideas work with timing. Let me give an example of Moses. Most of you may not realize this, that when Moses, first of all, stepped out to save Israel, it was not the right time. Because the Lord had told Abraham that Israel would spend 400 years in what? In Egypt. When Moses stepped out, remember that they spent 430 years. And Moses was 40 years older from when he ran. That means that the first time he stepped out, Israel had just spent 390 years in Egypt. Because he jumped ahead of time, Israel spent extra 30 years. It's wonderful. It's really wonderful to do something. But his timing is very key. Unfortunately, most of us don't know God's timing for our life. We want to compare it to what another person is doing. But remember what he says. He said, in his time, it makes all things beautiful. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. What does clarity look like? First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 32. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 32. You know, what does clarity look like? First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 32. First, sorry, first Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. What does clarity look like? I love what Jesus Christ said. I mean, there's a lot of scriptures I could quote to you. But, you know, I'm just going to move fast. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. The Bible says, Of the children of Issachar, which were men that had the understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. It says, they had the understanding of the time. So they knew that this is the season to transition into entrepreneurship. They knew this is a season to remain at home. This is the season to partner. The reason why the sons of Isiaka had edge over every other person was this. They had understanding of what to do. That's clarity. John 6, 6 says this. The Bible says, and Jesus knowing what he would do. The secret of Jesus' ministry was simple. He knew exactly what he would do. It was not guesswork. He had clarity. Galatians chapter 1 verse 15. The power of clarity. Because idea has its own time. And some doors are also timed. Genesis 1 verse 15. Paul speaking. But when it pleased God who had separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Verse 16. He says it. To reveal a son that I may preach him among the Gentiles. See what we said. He said it was so clear. I confessed not with flesh and blood. What didn't I do? He says neither went I up to Jerusalem. He says I didn't go and meet people that will confuse me. He said I confessed not with flesh and blood. Clarity. The question is this. Are you in the right place at the right time? You can be going to the right place and take a detour. 
Someone says, how do you mean? It happened to the wise men. They were looking for Jesus Christ and all of a sudden, they forgot the star that appeared to them and they branched at where? And they branched at the house of Herod. They did not know that branch was a mistake. How do I know it was a mistake? The Bible says as soon as they branched, they start, they saw disappeared. Don't enter a place where they start leading you will disappear. Don't enter a relationship where they start leading you will disappear. Don't enter a business where they start leading you will disappear. The Bible says, and the start disappeared. One of the beauty of this meeting is that as we worship, as we pray, the Spirit of God begins to reveal things to us because that's what it does. He's our teacher. So in this meeting, there will be breakthroughs, there will be miracles, there will be signs, but more than that, there will be clarity. You will just know what to do about the future. Men talk about our houses. Hallelujah. Why is clarity important? Because clarity provides or clarity accelerates progress. No matter how powerful it is, the darker it gets, the slower you become. That's why most people drive slower at night than in the day because they don't have what? Clarity. Once you don't have clarity, your pace will be life will be slow. Speed is connected to light. The dimmer the light, the slower the pace. Why is clarity important? Clarity is important. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. A lot of people experience frustration because they have no clarity. But a lot of people also do not know that one of the things the Spirit of God does is to provide clarity. That's what the thing the Spirit of God does for us. He provides us clarity. You will see someone that is struggling to have a child. He says, do you want a child? And they will say, um, if God wills. And if you say so, then... God wills what you will. That's the problem. God wills what you will. Are you clear that this is what God wants for you? Are you clear about God's love for you? Do you know he loves you? Some people pray as if God is their problem. Remember that God is not your problem. That God is on your side. When you pray about your marriage, I say God is the one that is troubling it. God is not your problem. God is on your side. Are you clear of what life means to you? Oh my God. This is one of the most painful things. A lot of people, when you think of life, what comes to your mind is battle. That should never be a child of God. When a child of God think of life, think of life as a garden prepared for me. Your, your experience will be different. Once you think of life as a battle, you will see yourself as a fighter. It will go from one battle to the other battle to the other battle. And because that's what you believe, that's what you experience. But once you think of life as he prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy... I don't go into life apprehensive. I go into life full of assurance that before I got there, he prepared for me. And God is really smart. Do you know that? Do you, have you asked yourself why God created man last? Just one reason. He made all that man needed so that when man was created, there will be nothing he wanted that he did not have. Someone said, what about his wife? He only pulled the wife out of him. He was showing man that everything you need I've created. Whatever you now need is on the inside. Bring it out of you. That's what he was saying. So he told man, he says, I'm going to show you how it works. Whatever you need after now, just remember, it's on the inside. Bring it out of you. Where's the business for? On the inside. Bring it out of you. So don't go through life and say, I don't know what to do myself. No, sir. It's on the inside. Bring That's what... Elisha told the woman, he said, what do you have in your house? He said, there's something in your spirit. 
Don't man said, just a, just a jar of oil. <laughs> Elisha said, just a jar of oil. Don't you know that this is a miracle? You must be clear. There are things you must be clear on before even yourself. You must be clear about your relationship with God. One thing you must never doubt. And let me say something to you. The way you know you are in spiritual trouble and you are under demonic attack is the moment you begin to doubt God's love for you. Every time you consistently doubt God's love for you, you are under heavy, articulated, systemic spiritual attack. You know why? Because you can never be close to the person you think is against you. And unfortunately, that's what many believe. They keep doubting the love of God for them. When they want to pray, God, are you, look at how you are looking at me. My own God does not look at me anyhow. Before I ask, he has answered. Someone says, okay, okay, thank you for saying this, but how do you explain my case? And this is what you want to do. You want to use your experiences to explain God's love for you. You will miss road. Let me ask you a question. When you were young, if you explain your mother's love from how she treated you, Will you have thought when you were young that she loved you? No. But as you grew older, what did you do? You understood what? His love. I love rather. The same thing. If you use your experiences to interpret God's love for you, you will miss way. As a matter of fact, the way my, my parents treated me, I felt at some time that they were not my parents. That I was given birth to by this very rich person. And they died in an accident. And they gave them a lot of money to take care of me. And that's why they are behaving. Did you also have that kind of theology? So the same Satan was messing with all of our heads at the same time. Say God loves me. Say God is good and kind to me. That's why I think about God. And guess what? The revelation of God you have determines the manifestation of God you see. The revelation of God you have determines the manifestation of God you see. You must be very clear that God is good and kind to me. And so when I have experiences that are difficult to explain, let, let, let me give you this. Someone said to me, Pastor, when you have difficult things to explain that happen to you, how do you explain it? I'll give it to you today. I told myself, I never allow what I do not understand to confuse what I understand. If I prayed about something, it doesn't go the way I want. I know prayer works. That I understand. This one that did not go the way I want, I leave it alone because I don't allow what I understand to confuse what I don't, what I don't understand to confuse what I understand. Let me give you a good example. Doctors have a procedure of treating asthma, of treating malaria. But once in a while, they will have a patient that died and they did everything but did not recover. Do they dump the way of treating malaria because of that patient? What they do is that they will just isolate it and say it had complications. They can't explain it. And they keep treating other people because they know this one works. You, when something happens, you dump both the prayer, you dump the church, you dump the Jesus, then who do you have? Who do you have? You must always tell yourself, I do not allow what I do not understand to confuse what I understand. And that has kept me many years. Like doctors, I would just say isolated case. Glory to God. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Why is it important to have clarity? Chapter 12 verse 10 rather. Chapter 10, verse 15. I'm sorry. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15, this is why it's important to have clarity. It said, The labor of the foolish wearieth or frustrate every one of them because it does not know how to go into the city. It says, When you see people that are extremely frustrated, they are frustrated because there's no clarity of how to enter their goal. This is why clarity is important. So you see someone that um, he's trying to raise up the child as a teenager child and it's not going well. And the reason why is that it does not know the way to the city. You see someone that is trying to get married 
and that marriage is not happening because it does not know the way to city so the frustration most of us have is that we know what we want but the pathway to get there we don't have it but thank god for the holy spirit that can clearly provide us clarity today either you're a grandmother or you're a successful businessman and you're asking yourself what is the next phase of my business what's the next phase for ministry and you're wondering i wanted to let you know something eh our path in life was determined before we came it's by leaning into god to find clarity it says the labor of the foolish have you tried so hard to grow your business have you tried so hard to make the connection have you tried so hard and you don't realize that the labor of the foolish will yet in because it does not know how to go into the city so the question now is this which is a great question why do i feel frustrated maybe you don't know the way maybe you don't know the way and this is a, this is a new season this is a new year one of the key things god must do for you is to grant you clarity I don't want to be at the right place at the wrong time. I don't want to be at the wrong place at the right time. There's something about being at the right place. I showed that scripture yesterday, Matthew chapter 2, verse 10, the message translation. Let's read this together. Matthew chapter 2, verse 10. Well, very powerful scripture. Talking about the talking about the birth of Jesus. Matthew chapter 2, verse 10, the message translation. Matthew chapter 2, verse 10. The Bible says, from verse 9, instructed by the king, they set off. Then the star appeared, the same star they had seen in the eastern skies, and it led them until it hovered over the place of the child. And they could hardly contain themselves. Why? They were in the right place, and they had arrived at what? At the right time. They were in the right place. It's a prayer you must pray every day. As I step out today, I'm in the right place at the right time. As I move to Abuja, I'm in the right place at the right time. As I walk into the train today, I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm not in the wrong place. No, 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 no. I'm being shielded. I'm being protected from wrong people. I'm in the right place at the right time. Just like as you are here right now, you are in the right place at the right time. Last Sunday, we had a testimony in church. If you attend harvesters, you know our pattern. After each of the services, we don't have a big man of God. We just have brothers and sisters in Christ. I will stay at the gate and literally say hi to everyone after each service. So there was this lady that had been married for seven years and they didn't have a child. She had told her husband, I'm sure she might even be here. She had told the husband, let's go and tell pastor so he can pray for us. Husband said, you join NLP. Don't go and meet any pastor to pray for you. Let's go. So as I was at the exit, they were walking past and they had walked past me and she was tempted to say hello. And all of a sudden, she passed by and I just saw them. I can't remember the story. And I said, please call the two of them for me. And they came back and I greeted them. And when I came back, she said, that was a sign from God that I should talk to you. He said, well, my husband was right there. So I didn't want my husband to feel embarrassed. He said, as he told us to go, these are the words. He said, I leaned over and said, Pastor, pray for us. Seven years, no baby. He said, you know, she just said so fast. Pastor, pray. Seven years, no baby. So I pulled them back. And I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive. That was January the 12th. February the 13th. She had cost her to go to the hospital. And she was pregnant. How did it happen? Why did I call them? They were at the right place at the right time. You must understand that some blessings are tied to locations. That's why you must be careful not to be in the wrong place. You must be at the right place at the right time. And this is my prayer for you. That grace will guide you. Yeah. Oh, that amen is on the wheelchair. Grace will guide you. Yeah. Grace will guide your children. Yeah. It will guide your grandchildren. Yeah. You will be at the right place at the right time in the right conversation 
if you believe shout amen say grace say grace say grace say this is my story Praise God. I hope those in the extensions can hear me. Okay, all of you in the extension on the right, just shout a big hallelujah. Okay, I know you can hear. Now, all of you in the extension behind, that would be the hall too, shout a big hallelujah. Did you see them on the screen? They're waving on the screen. That means you heard me. Then, of course, there are those... Because of, there's no space also, we've opened the Lekki Center, all the other churches, the Lekki Center is open. This was meant to be our, but we, the people are in the Lekki Center, so I know you are there in the Lekki Center. And of course, all the other churches from Abuja to Antony to Bagada, all of them are there. Ali Moshoi, Kurodu, all of them holding today. And all of you online, most importantly. Yeah, those online watching from Canada, watching from, yeah. Awesome. I noticed that by the time I woke up this morning, the online view of yesterday's service was a hundred and two thousand. Yeah, by the time we woke up, a hundred and two thousand. So the question is this: Why am I not clear? Yeah, why am I not clear? I, I've been praying for clarity. Why am I not clear? Why am I not? Can I get a bottle of water? Why am I not clear? Why am I not getting clear? Oh wow! Why am I not clear? Give me one of the sweets also. One or two of the sweets. You can unwrap the water for me. Why am I not clear? Because what I'm really praying that will happen is that the clarity you want in this meeting, that the Spirit of God will give it to you. You will see clearly. You will see clearly. As a businessman, you will see clearly. How to achieve that first one billion? You will see it clearly. As a single mom or a widow that is wondering how will I take care of my children, you will see it clearly. You, you will see it clearly. That's your career part. You are saying, should I transit? Should I sail? You will see it clearly. Who to marry? How to marry? When to marry? You will see it clearly. Praise God. Yeah. Can you turn on the sweet for me also? Yeah. Just give me the water first. So this water is clear. But guess what? Mm. It tastes nice. Guess what? If I drop the sweet inside, do you have another one? Oh, you can get me more. If I drop the sweet inside. Let me put some more sweet inside. After some time, this water that is very clear will become what? Blurry. Why? Some things were put inside. The question is that what is distorting your clarity? And the things that distort your clarity are tiny things that you allow to get inside. The first one. What is it? Previous pain or experience? You can help me have this. Previous pain or experience? Did you notice something? Jesus told Peter, he says, let down your net for a catch. Peter was working for a catch all his life. What did he say? He something to say, thank you, Jesus. Let's do that. He said, no, Lord. He said, he said he went back to the past. He said, I've toyed all night. He became so unclear because his previous experience, especially the negative one, the previous pain had confused him. Maybe the reason why you're struggling with clarity is that you've allowed your past, your pains to confuse you. Is it not the same thing that happened to the man at the pool of Bethesda? Jesus Christ walked up to the man and said, Sir, do you want to be whole? And he forgot.
got the reason he had been standing by the pool for over 30 years the answer ought to do you want to be made whole is meant to be yes what did he say he says i have no man he had lost clarity he had forgotten maybe the reason why you're struggling to get married is that with all the challenges you've had with women or with men right now you're so confused you're never clear on what you want again maybe the reason why it's, a, it's difficult for you to dream in business is because of all that is going on and your heart is overwhelmed who knows what, who, who, who knows what i'm talking about that the reason why you don't have clarity about the business is because the losses you had in time pass and when it's time to dream again you find it difficult to dream because of the losses when it's time to love again you find it difficult to love because of the pain when it's time to try again you find it hard to try because of the previous failures when it's time to trust again you find it tr difficult to trust because of the previous betrayal and you're praying for clarity but the thing is that your clarity has what has can you put in more so so you have this so you've gone through losses and the losses are here you've gone through losses and this is here and you before you know it the water start changing color and many of you are here you even find it difficult to trust god because of what has happened in time past and you can come to church but god knows exactly where you are what is distorting your clarity hold on to this for me should i get a microphone i want to ask some people here i always do that in church this is church yeah what is distorting your clarity yeah give it to julianne I saw her laughing. Yeah. What is this thought in your clarity? Tell me. Is it previous experience or pain? Give her the microphone. Yeah. You don't have anything. Are you lying? Are you telling the truth? <laughs> that you want to share publicly? What is this? Just tell me. Is it previous pain or a previous experience? Which of them is it? Both both mm. is he about a person or is he about God and you can see our head is bowed because it's a place she does not want to go to but that place has not been healed we also tell me what is holding you back from having clarity just raise up your right hands I want someone to share a story thank you ma'am I have a I have yeah thank you because i see you praying you can you can just i, I see you praying all the time yeah where's where she yeah good evening everyone good evening when you just mentioned about um um you know finding love or finding a partner and your previous pain or previous experience is distorting that just touched me is is distorting your clarity so even when i want to pray you know when i have my prayers for the year i pray about my business i pray about my children when it comes to husband because of everything i've been married before i've been through pain through all that i prayed but i'm like i don't pray with faith i pray with like okay if it happens it happens more importantly i must make money <laughs> do you understand meanwhile i do want that deep in my heart I want to be married again deep in my heart but part of me because of what has happened i don't believe it wow thank you so much thank you so much look at how powerful that is and i wish i could say she's the only one in this room this matters to a lot of people and you're praying about an area of your life that is polluted and before god touches that area it will cleanse it first but yet you don't want God to cleanse it. Tonight is a purging meeting. Yeah. Tonight is a cleansing meeting because God wants to cleanse it first. Past experiences. The question is this. 
businessman. When did you become the man that stopped having faith, that lost your faith? Because you lost 5 million, you lost 10 million, you lost 100 million, and you've allowed your experiences to define who you are. And yet the Bible says, we walk by faith, not by sight. If something failed, the business failed, but you are not a failure. Glory to God. Let me take one more. One more. One more song. I'll share the story. Thank you, ma'am. Over here. Give this woman a microphone. Over here. Give her a microphone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, church. I wanted to raise my hand the first time. I was afraid, so the sister gave me courage. Uh, my name is Titi. I'm Nigerian. I live in Ghana. And Ghana, yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. I came purposely for wine press. We came from Ghana for wine yes. press. You're welcome. Thank you. So I'm in a similar situation. I've also been married before, um, and I've tried dating a few times since my marriage ended. And you know, it's I feel as if I'm going. I have a, a mental image as if I'm going with a magnifying glass. So you see something, and you're like, it reminds you of something that happened before. And I don't know if it's me picking the wrong men. Or if I'm over scrutinizing, but it has been a challenge. And so, as much as I'm praying, there is some kind of hesitation somewhere. Thank you. Anybody that has to do with business, we've seen relationships, it has to do with business. You want to tell a story? Is it sim similar to this one? Different? Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, So my, mine has to do with um, church or faith. I used to attend Redeem. Then I wanted to go for pageantry 2017. I was much slimmer. And then I joined. <laughs> and then I joined a particular church. So it destroyed my faith because it felt like my whole life capsized. Like everything was just going south. So I stopped going to church for what, like two what years. What did you do? So, um, I'm sure that church is not... No, no, it's not about the church. Don't, don't worry. Just, okay. uh, again, how, how would it impact you, you know? So, I started facing so much difficulties, disappointments here and there. And I just knew it was from there because everything was fine before I went to that church. <laughs> everything was working out fine. Even my... It felt like I had more faith in the pastor. You joined the church and your life just turned downwards. Yes, I know I had a setback because eventually he and so what happened to you because of that you stopped going to church so i had losses in my business i my family divided like because i was getting prophecies fake pastors and stuff so it affected my life because i wasn't even someone that believed in such churches and i just found myself there somehow so because of all the the problems i had i left the church and I didn't attend any church. It really broke me until like two years later, while I was in school, I joined Dominion City. But before then, I've been like, why am I going to church? Why do I need to go to church? I don't know if the next church I'm going to join, if it's going to be the same, if my life is going to remain stagnant. So I eventually joined Dominion City through my friend and God sent me a sign. I had not received a lot in two years from anybody, no favors. So I know what I'm saying. But in that week when I joined, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, continue. It was steady a lot from people Hallelujah. I knew I Amen. could even help. Amen. Amen. Just because of time. Praise the Lord. Thank you. You can have your seats. This is what I'm saying to you. Everyone has that experience that if you allow, will blur your clarity. The question is this. Why do you hold on to your own? I always say something to me. Life does not happen against me. Life happens for me. Life does not happen against me. Because I'm a child of God. Life happens for me. So what does that mean? Whatever happened is going to turn up for my good if I can stay positive. 
I lost money in business, it happens for me. If I can stay positive, it will turn out for my good. I had the divorce, it can turn out for my good if I can stay positive. Why am I not clear? Because of previous pain. The second thing why people are not clear is this, their fears. Their fears affect their clarity. And some of the stories you've heard today are stories of fear. And the reason I'm saying so is this, you think that God is not answering your prayers, but your fear is distorting your clarity. As a matter of fact, you used to bring a big dreamer, now you're a small dreamer because of your fear. And the last thing that blocks clarity is this, are our own emotions and personal desires. Does this man come to your mind called Balaam, the prophet? The Bible says that the, the, the king says, come and curse Israel. And he said, oh yeah, no, no I'm not going to go and curse Israel. And he said, God changed his mind. This was him. That God changed his mind and said, go. You know, when you don't understand the Bible, you really think that God told him to go. Until you read the Bible where an angel stood and obstructed him. Question. There's no way God can tell you to go and an angel will obstruct you. Because the Bible says angel performed the voice of his will. That's what the Bible says. So, I really believe that that man was hearing himself and hearing himself into the will of God. So, the reason why sometimes we don't have clarity is that we just come to pray knowing what we want to do and how we want to do it and we hope that God will accept it. And he doesn't accept it. That is his business. And God says it doesn't work that way. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Psalm 46 verse 10. The biggest thing that can happen to you tonight is to have clarity and to know for the next one year of my life. The reason why is that if you receive a miracle in your body, that's wonderful. But clarity will preserve your whole life and bring you deep fulfillment. So, how do I receive clarity? Psalm 46 verse 9. It said, so what is it? It said, be still. Clarity will not come in the place of anxiety or high emotion. So, when you find yourself shaking, being afraid, shaking, being afraid. And, and that's why sometimes when you want to have clarity, it's good to use worship. And use songs to numb your emotions and paralyze your anxiety. You know, because you want to come to a place where the presence of God can overwhelm your soul. He said, be still. The reason why is this. Sometimes when you think God is not talking, God is talking. But you are too noisy to hear him. Sometimes when you think God is talk, not talking, he's talking, but your emotions are high. You are troubled about the news of inflation. You are troubled about this client. You are troubled about this person that is dating you but wants to break up. You are troubled about that. You are troubled about migration. You are troubled about visa. And you, your mind is everywhere. And you think God is not talking. And God says, the way you're going to help me is be still. And what does it mean to be still? You close your ears to the noise on the outside so that you can hear the sound on the inside. When you hear the voice of God, the word of God about your marriage, it will give you peace and rest. The reason why you are anxious is that you have no head from heaven. He said, be still. He says, it's unto your steel. You know what I found as a pastor? Every time I'm anxious, I find it difficult to hear God. But every time I come to a place of stillness and rest, I hear God. As I say it this way, it says, in quietness and confidence shall your strength be. Where's my rope? Do you have my rope here? Sometimes people always ask me, and it's a great prayer. They always ask, why do you pray for a long time? Why do we pray Monday you pray, Tuesday you pray, Wednesday you pray, Thursday you pray, Friday you pray? Why do you pray? And most people think that the more we pray, we're, talking, we're trying to get God to get our attention. That's not true all the time. 
This is why we pray. I don't know if this is going to work for me. No, this is not going to work for me. This is long, right? This is why we pray. Yeah. Come, come, you come. This is why we pray. So let's come and help me. This is why we, you have to tie it. Hold him. Tie it. Pass it. Tie it. M- tie his hand. His hand must not move. Hold it. Tie his hands. Yeah. Yeah. Just hold it that way. That's fine. This is why we pray. So that we can incapacitate the flesh. So that the flesh. Try to move your hand. Try to move your hand. So that the flesh will not bury. It will not bury. Praise God. You will hold it. Someone says, why are we praying? Because every time we pray, we tie the flesh. We tie. The problem with you is this. Let me hold on to this. The problem with you is that as you are praying, your friend is saying, your flesh is saying, ah, 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 ah. Your, your flesh is too strong. In the place of prayer, we paralyze the flesh. Some of you have been, some of you, you say, how do I know what to do? I'm hearing two different voices. Stay in prayer for a long time. The voice of the spirit will take over. The voice of the flesh will be swallowed. Didn't you hear what he said? He said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He said, so therefore, pray. Why? In the place of prayer, you tie the flesh. This flesh that is always wanting to take you over, you use prayer to paralyze it. Have you noticed when you're fasting, your flesh comes down? Why? Pray, pray and fasting tames the flesh. You say, Pastor, I don't even know what happens to me. Before I know it, I fall in love with somebody else. You are not prayerful. When you are prayerful and they want to date you, if your flesh wants to date, oh yeah, move. How? Prayer has held the flesh. Prayer has held the flesh. Your fear is trying to tell you, don't do that business. As you pray, prayer will hold the flesh. Prayer is our weapon to tame the flesh. When we tame the flesh, whatever the spirit wants to do, give it to me. We will now drag it to do what the spirit wants to do. We will drag the flesh to do what the spirit wants to do. We will drag the flesh to do what the spirit wants to do. Somebody shout hallelujah. Prayer is your tool to bend the flesh. Hallelujah. Prayer is your tool to conquer, to bend the flesh. Somebody shout hallelujah. So when they say, why are we praying for a long time? Because we want to tie it. We want to paralyze it. We want to compel it. How do you receive clarity? Be still. Paralyze, how do you paralyze all these emotions and fears in the place of prayer? Because in the place of prayer, the power of God overcomes the flesh. Sometimes God puts a vision in my heart and I'm very afraid to do it. You know what I do? I know the fear is of the flesh. So I go to the place of prayer so that prayer can paralyze the flesh. And through prayer, I compel my flesh to follow my spirit. Some of you, that's what you need. For your flesh to follow your spirit. How do you receive clarity? By dealing with the emotions, be still. Maybe you lost your job. Don't go, hey, God, God. That's why your prayers are not answered. Because they're emotion-based prayer. Before you talk, be still. Be still. The client that promised you will send the money has not sent the money. Be still. Don't say, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening. Be still. And know that I am the Lord. What do you do next? Go to the word. The reason why is that when you study the word of God, the word of God gives expression to the voice of God. The word of God gives expression to the voice of God. Let 
then learn to engage in worship and prayer. Why? Worship and prayers are the portals of encounter. You know, sometimes my assistant helps me. We take a picture and he says, Pastor, let her drop it to my phone. And he say, okay, I say I drop it. And he will just click on something on my iPhone. And that picture will move from my phone to his phone. Worship and prayer is a portal of a drop. When we move things from a dimension to another dimension. When we move things from a dimension. So, if your heart is full of fear, as we begin to worship and pray, we begin to move substance, faith, varieties of the spirit from a dimension to another. There is activation going on. Who is ready for some Holy Ghost head drop today? Sometimes when you come to this kind of service, you just see someone go, Hey, hey, you know, what happened? They just got a head drop message. They just got what? An head drop message. <laughs> because someone says, But why don't I feel it? Because your Wi Fi was not on. Wow, your Wi Fi wasn't on. <laughs> Turn on your Wi-Fi. <laughs> Turn on your Wi-Fi. You want your healing? Turn on your Wi-Fi. You want a baby? Turn on your Wi-Fi. You want answer prayer? Turn on your Wi-Fi. The Holy Ghost is too nature. Somebody shout, I receive it. The Holy Ghost is too nature. Before you know it, the one that had arthritis says, ah, 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 because there was an edge of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Did you read Acts chapter 2? The Bible says, and suddenly, Peter was going to tell Mary, give me water. And next thing, Banconte le manco parata. And Mary says, Suleiman Kupratane. What's going on? The Holy Ghost has come. The head drop of the Holy Ghost had filled the room. But thank God their Wi Fi's were on. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Turn on your Wi Fi. Let the Holy Ghost drop something. <laughs> I see him dropping marital breakthroughs. I see him dropping spiritual breakthroughs. I see him dropping spiritual renewal. Mantles of the spirit are dropping. Oh, Rabbi, I see breakthroughs dropping. I see healings dropping. I see miracles dropping. I see insight dropping. Shout, I receive it. Oh, head drop of the Holy Ghost. Ha, ya, 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 ya. Head drops of the Holy Ghost. My Wi Fi is on. Everything is on. Drop Holy Ghost. I'm ready. 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 I'm ready. Hey, ya, 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 ya. Hot it. Set it for a solid effort. Rub it for solid effort. Leap on the number. Rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it. Salagaya, praise the Holy Ghost.